Chapter 22, Electromagnetic Induction. So at this point, we've seen a lot about the electricity side of things, electric fields, electric forces. And we've also seen the magnetic side of things, magnetic fields, magnetic forces. Now we're going to start to see how they work together in this electromagnetic idea, specifically focused on induction in this chapter. So the basic idea here is that there's a number of ways that a magnetic field can be used to generate a current, an electric current, right? Those two things are somehow connected. Here's one example. If we have an ammeter, something that can detect current and it's connected to a coil, so this wire is wrapped around a material here, a ferromagnetic probably that just enhances the effect here. But the main important thing to focus on, right, is that we have an ammeter a coil with it. And then we have a bar magnet nearby. Now, if the bar magnet's just sitting there, nothing happens to the ammeter. And this is pretty normal. This is something we see all the time, right? Nothing happens. Where it becomes interesting is if we take that bar magnet and move it closer to the ammeter, then all of a sudden, there's a current that the ammeter can detect. Similarly, if we pull the bar magnet away, there will also then be a current in the ammeter. So the key here is that it's the changing field that produces a current. We don't have a current when the magnet's just sitting there, even if it's sitting right next to the coil. But when the magnet is moving relative to the coil, then the strength of the magnetic field is changing. It's increasing as it moves closer. The magnetic field is weakening in the coil as it moves further away. So we'll see a bit more of this uh, to come. But a few more notes here. The current that is in the coil from the motion of the magnet is called the induced current because it's brought about by this changing magnetic field. So it's been induced. It wasn't created by a battery or some power supply. It was just induced by a changing magnetic field. Since a source of EMF is always needed to produce a current, the coil then behaves as though it's an EMF source. So this EMF is known as the induced EMF. So it's the changing magnetic field has made it as though it appears though like there's a battery there, that the coil has become a battery. But it's not a real battery, so that's why we call it induced as opposed to just our standard EMF. As mentioned, this is one way that we can induce a current and an EMF in a loop of wire. Another way that we have is if we imagine that we have a loop of wire um, and we adjust the size of it. Right. This picture is a little hard to see what's going on here, but it's in one instance, uh, the coil is smaller and then the fingers stretch it to make the coil larger, right? So if we then make the coil larger, if we change the area of the coil that's within this magnetic field, which is shown with the X's here, that will also cause a current to pass through the loop and the ammeter will detect that, that there's some current here. A couple of notes here. In both of these examples, both the EMF and the current are induced because the coil is part of a complete circuit, right? The coil is wired through the ammeter and back to the coil. If the circuit was open, that is if we disconnected some part of the circuit, there would be no induced current because we need to have a complete loop for there to be current. Interestingly though, there still would be an induced EMF. So you can induce an EMF even if you have an open circuit. Now, all of these ideas uh, are summed up with the idea of electromagnetic induction, which is officially defined as the phenomena of producing an induced EMF with the aid of a magnetic field. In the next few sections, we're going to take a look at more of the details in this electromagnetic induction. So stick around, it's only gonna get better.